Hey everybody and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success. I want to say thanks for joining us today on the live stream where we're going to be talking about a high volume workflow that you can use to deliver your client their images using Zenfolio restricted events. Now, if this is your first time joining us on the live stream, make sure that you say hi to us in the chat. Let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in at. Um, and also, as always, I've got Richard hanging out, moderating, taking care of you guys in chat, so make sure that you guys show him some love. But today what we're gonna be talking about is Zenfolio restricted events. So we're gonna go into what is a restricted event, the data that you need, like shoot logs, different things like that. I'm gonna talk about participants list and keywording photos. We're gonna go into organizing and uploading, then creating the event, checking your data, and then finally getting into batch emailing your image links out to your clients. So it's gonna be a day, on a day, but it's gonna be a live stream full of lots of stuff. Now, if you're watching this, Remember, the, the recording is always going to be available later on on our YouTube channel. So if you need to go back and reference something that we were talking about, it's going to come out to our YouTube channel. And you can always go back and rewind and see what I was talking about. So it'll be there on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe so you get notifications of that. Let me say hi to some of you guys that are already chatting with us. We've got Craigslist asking if it's Friday yet. Pretty close. Pretty close. Uh, Winston Photo says, Happy Friday Eve. Absolutely. Uh, Tom England says hello we've got something blue from portland oregon oregon kathleen riley tuning in from minnesota thanks for coming to hang out with us kathleen and we've got mark i'm going to try to say the last the last name right millendorf from uh, looks like from new york so hey guys thanks for jumping on here and hanging out also guys if you didn't know today is actually inner is actually the international day of charity and it's also this live stream is three years exactly that we've been doing Zenfolio Live. So I did my first live stream three years ago exactly today. It is rather embarrassing and painful to watch, but it's actually still on our YouTube channel. If you wanna go check it out one day when you're bored and come back and make fun of me later, you're more than welcome to. Now, back to the International Day of Charity, there are a couple of links in the description below this video of charities that I'm personally gonna be giving to today. If you guys want to go check them out, you can. You don't have to go give it to those charities. You can use your own. One of them is actually a Zenfolio user. His name is Anthony Carball. I'm going to try to say his name right. Anthony Carball Hall. He's an amazing photographer. You guys might remember the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. He was a part of that. Um, he does have ALS, and unfortunately, his disease, as it does, is progressing. And so you can learn more about Anthony and go donate, which I'm going to do later on today, uh, in the description below this video. So make sure that you click those links and you check it out. 
All right. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into today's topic. Hey, Amy. Hey, Roxanne. And uh, Mark says he's from Texas. So thanks for jumping on here from Texas. Um, I think that's what he's saying. But we're going to go ahead and jump into today's topic, which is doing that high volume workflow. So let me just jump into that. All right. So here we are in my Zenfolio account. And the first thing that we want to talk about is what is a restricted event, right? You guys might have seen these in your accounts. If you go and you hover over all photographs, if you have a, um, if you have a, uh, let me go right here. So right here, that's an event. So if you have an advanced account, if you have a premium business account, you get access to what's called a Zenfolio event. And what a Zenfolio event is, is it allows you to basically get a lot of people directly to their photos without having to create a password protected gallery for each person. So normally if you're doing like a portrait session or something like that, you have one client at a time and you make a gallery, you create a password, you email them that gallery. But if you're doing high volume work like schools or sports, you're gonna take a lot of photos of a lot of people in one day and it would just take way too long to go in and individually create a gallery for each and every person that you photographed password each one of those galleries, and then email them all separately. And that is where a Zenfolio event comes into play. Now, I've talked about these a couple of times before on our live stream. So if you um, if you want to go back and learn about open events, you can just go to our YouTube channel and learn about using open events. They work really good for sports, where you basically want to let people find things, find images by like their keywords or their jersey numbers or something like that. But today, specifically, we're going to be talking about a restricted event. And what a restricted event allows you to do is basically give each participant a unique password and you can upload a participant list that will allow you to batch email everybody directly to their photos, provided that you're able to get all the parent or participant emails. Now, if you are not able to get parent emails, if you're not able to get the participants emails, maybe you work with schools and for privacy reasons, they don't give the emails out. If you guys will tune in next week, I'm gonna show you a way around that. This week, we're gonna assume that you are able to get parent emails and we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about that. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is what is the data that you need when you're doing an, an event? Right, so let's we're gonna just think say that we're photographing a sports team um, or maybe a sports league. So what is the data that you need to be able to actually do a Zenfolio event? Well, if you can get from the league a participants list, if you can get something that looks like this, where maybe you have all of the players' names, their jersey number, what team they're on, and if you can get the emails, that's an added bonus. If you can get that information, that's really helpful. Sometimes, like I said, the leagues, the schools, they don't want to give out that information with the emails, but you might be able to get something like a list of players and their jersey number. The important thing is, is that if you can get some kind of list. Now, if you can't get a list from the league, the best next thing that you for you to do is to create your own list like a shoot log. So as you're going out and either you're doing the shoot or you're having photographers that work for you do a shoot, you want to make sure that you keep a shoot log so that you know whose photos was taken and in what order and all of that stuff. And that's going to be really helpful because you have to do some data matching in order for this to work. Now, I shoot youth sports and I actually have to manually write a shoot log on an actual piece of paper of everybody that I photograph and I have to Every time I take somebody's photo, I have to stop and manually write that information down. Now, there are third parties that offer things like QR code solutions, different things like that. You can definitely do some Google searches and find uh, third parties that do that. I'm going to show you today how to do it if um, basically if you're doing it manually on your own, keeping track of, you know, a shoot log and having to manually enter this information. All right. So this is the data that you need. I cannot stress how important it is that you keep an accurate shoot log. This is like 100% going to save you if you make sure that you're keeping an accurate shoot log. So again, at the shoot, you're writing down the kid's name that you're taking. Um, you could even do cards where you have them hold it up that has their name on it. You photograph that and then you photograph the kid. But you need a, a fail safe way that even if you're using a third party service to do QR codes, if their system fails, you need to have a way that you can go back, even if it takes some manual work on your end, to know 
this is who I photographed, this is who that kid is. Um, and that way you have that information there. All right, so the, you need to get into the habit of keeping good shoot logs. Like hands down, it will save save you so many times. Make sure that that's something that if you have photographers working under you that you drill in their heads, that they need to keep that accurate shoot log of all the photos that they take. All right, okay, so let's say that we've done the shoot, we've kept our shoot log, and we've actually, were able to get a CSV file like this from the league, okay? So we were able to get this CSV file from the league. We have everybody's names, their information here. We've done the shoot. We've got it in Lightroom. What is the next step to get this into a Zenfolio event? Well, the next step is you have to keyword the photos. Now, again, there are third-party services that can help you do this. I'm showing you how to do this manually so that you can understand how to do this on your own if you have to do it on your own. If those third parties fail you, if something's not working and you actually have to go in and manually do this yourself, you will know how to do it because that is really important. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just jump in Lightroom really quick and I'm gonna show you these photos and show you how to keyword in Lightroom just in case you've never keyworded in Lightroom before and I'm gonna show you how to set this up. So here we are in Lightroom, all right? And these are just some demo photos that I've taken. Obviously they have the numbers in the photo that I'm gonna be using because what we need to do is we need to have some kind of unique identifier for each participant. Now, if you can get the league or the school to send you a CSV file that has like their jersey number or maybe it has their student ID, as long as that number is unique per person, you can use that as the unique identifier, which is what I'm gonna do here. Works really good for student IDs because a lot of times there are not repeat student IDs. If you're doing sports and you're using jersey numbers, you might need to add the first letter of the team name in front of that jersey number just in case a jersey number is repeated throughout the league. And then you're gonna end up with a bunch of people's photos showing up together because you keyworded it with the jersey number. So you need to make sure that you have some kind of unique identifier lined out per person. If you don't have that information, you can go into your spreadsheet right here and you can just get this list and you can say, okay, I'm gonna do this. This person is zero one, and then I'm going to um, just drag this down. So let me actually do zero zero one like that. And it's not listening here. Hold on one second. Let me fix this really quick. Let me do a number like this. And then we're gonna do zero zero one and you could just drag this down and maybe not. Let me fix this one second, guys. What you could do is just do zero one and then you can write this equals this plus one and that's gonna basically increase the number and then you can just drag this down and you're basically just giving each participant a unique number. So if you don't have like a jersey number or anything like that, you just have to have some kind of unique number per participant on this list that cannot be repeated throughout the entire list. And you can make it right here in the spreadsheet. Now, while we're talking about the spreadsheet really quick, I'm in Google Sheets. It's what I like to use because it's free with your Gmail account and you can access it anywhere you want. So just as a side note, you can use Microsoft Excel. I would really caution you to stay away from numbers. Numbers, uh, the Mac program numbers does some weird formatting things sometimes. So I would definitely caution you to stay away from using numbers. I like Google Sheets. Again, it's free with your Gmail account. You can access it anywhere. You can log into your Google account and there are lots of really cool formulas. And if you like to play around in coding, there's lots of really cool stuff that you can do with Google Sheets. And that's what I'm in right now. But back to our photos, right? So it's after the shoot and we're keywording our photos. So if you have that shoot log handy, what you do is you pull up your photos and you start keywording them with each person or each participant's unique identifier. And so you're just gonna go to your photos, and if you take multiple photos of people, you can keyword all of the photos at once. So let's ignore these names right here for a minute, and let's just say that these first three photos are all the same person. They're all Alex, whose keyword is gonna be Z07. So what you can do in Lightroom is you go to your library, 
Click the first person, hold shift on your keyboard, go to that last photo of that person, and then you're gonna to go to the keywording option right over here, and you're just gonna put in that keyword. So I'm gonna put in Z07 and hit enter, and we'll just click out of that, and we've now keyworded all three of these photos with Z07. And then you would just continue that process down the list through the rest of your photos, which is why it's really handy to have that shoot log or that participants lift kind of off to the side so you can reference it when you get to the next person. You can say, oh, the next person is this, I need to keyword their photos with that. And so you're just gonna make sure that you're keywording all of these photos. So I'm gonna go back in and correct these two really quick. This is Z08, so I would go here, Z08, and hit enter and then just go to the next photo and correct that keyword to be Z05, just like that and hit enter. Okay, so that is how you keyword the individual participants. And like I said, you could do them multiple at the same time if they all are the same person that you had photographed like I showed you there. Otherwise, you're just gonna be coming down to each photo and doing this. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, that's a lot of people that I have to go in and keyword. Well, if you compare the time that it takes to keyword these photos with the amount of time that it would take you to upload each one of these per people to their own gallery, set up their own password for that gallery, and then somehow get that gallery link and password to each individual's parents, you are gonna save yourself probably days of work doing it this way through the keywords versus creating password protected galleries for each individual person. Okay, so the next thing that we need to talk about is how do you do groups? Okay, so groups or team photos or class photos, they need to contain the keywords of everybody that appears in that photo. And so if I scroll down, you're gonna see there's two team photos here. There's a Zenfolio blue team and there's a Zenfolio orange team. Now, if I click in this, you're gonna see that I've already keyworded all of the participants that appear in this photo. I've already taken their keywords and put it in here. Again, this is where if you are able to get some data from the school, from the league, you can use your spreadsheet to help get this information for you rather than having to manually go in here and say, okay, I know that this person is in here, so I'm gonna enter their keyword, comma, enter the next person's keyword, comma, and so forth. You can actually use your spreadsheet to get this information for you, as long as what you got from the school or the league is in the correct format. And so let me show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back into our spreadsheet, and basically what we need to know is we need to know all of the keywords of all of the players that appear or that are in the orange team, and we need those separated by commas, and then we need to know the keywords for the players in the blue team, and we need all of those together separated by commas so that we can go back and keyword those into that team photo. Now again, you can totally go and manually do it in the photo, just typing in the keyword comma, typing in the next one, but especially if your you know, shoot has more than two teams, now you're looking at a lot of extra work. And so if, you're, if your CSV file has a team identifier next to each person, you can write a couple of quick formulas to help you do this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first, let me see if I can get um, my browser here zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is just zoom in and then we're gonna write a, um, a quick formula here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click right over here in this, this empty column, and I'm just gonna write a formula. I'm gonna write the equal sign, the word unique, and then I'm gonna do Shift-9, and I'm gonna click on the group identifying column. So in this case, it's gonna be team, maybe it's class. I'm gonna click on that column. I'm gonna do a Shift-0 to close that formula out hit enter, and what that did was that basically pulled all of the unique team names in here for me. So if this list had like 25 different team names that were repeated for each person that's in here, all I need are the unique team names right over here. And so the next step is to get all of the jersey numbers 
for the players that are in each team separated by commas right next to it over here. And this is where you're gonna save yourself so much time. So you're gonna write what's called a join filter formula. So you're gonna click right here. You're gonna write the equal sign, the word join. You're gonna do shift nine. I think that's like a parenthesis. I can't remember. Somebody tell me in chat what that is actually called because I should probably know. But you're gonna do a shift nine. And then the first thing that we need to tell our formula is we need to tell it what we want to join our information together with. And so in this case, we want to join this together with a comma. So I'm gonna do a quotation mark, a comma, and then a quotation mark. And that is what we're gonna join our data together with. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is write a filter. So we're gonna do one more comma. We're going to write the word filter in here. And then we're going to do a shift nine again. And then we're going to first identify what column we are going to filter. I know this might be making your head spin, but I promise if you just take it step by step, this will really save you guys some time. So first, we're going to identify what column we want to filter, which is the jersey number column right here. So I'm just going to select that column, and then we need to identify how do we want to filter this. So we're gonna do a comma, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we wanna filter the jersey numbers by only the jersey numbers that belong to the Zenfolio Orange team. So we're gonna say filter this column by if this column equals this right here. And then we're just gonna close our formula off. So we're gonna do a shift zero again, shift zero one more time to close the join filter off and hit enter. And then we have everybody that appears in the Zenfolio Orange team, all of their jersey numbers we have in this cell right here separated by commas, just like that. All right, so you can do that. Now, the other thing that you could do as well, if you didn't want to write a formula, you could filter this by the team, get all the teams together, and then you could come in here and copy it, but then you would still have to separate them by commas. Now, the other thing that we need to do is next, we just need to drag this formula down so that it does the same thing for the blue team. So all we're gonna do is grab the little dot, drag it down, and then we have it right over here. So now we have Everybody that appears in the blue team, all of their jersey numbers separated by commas here. And we have everybody on the orange team's jersey numbers separated by commas here. Now, the last step is to get this information and put it into Lightroom in the team photos. Now, if you'll notice, if I click here, right, I'm not seeing the actual data up here. I'm seeing a formula. That's because this is formula generated data. And so what you need to do is just simply copy this right here. So I'm just gonna select those. I'm gonna do a command C, and then I'm gonna right click and go to paste special, and we're gonna paste the values only. Or if you're on a Mac, you can do command shift and V. And so what that did was that took that data and turned it from being generated by a formula to actually hard generated data in this Excel sheet. So now I just copy this right here like this, Command C. Then I go into the orange team photo in Lightroom, click on that, come right in here and paste it in and I've keyworded my team photo. So then I would just repeat the same process for the rest of the team photos that I had to do till I had all of those done. All right, and so now the next step is that we need to export these photos and get them ready to upload into Zenfolio. Now, one of the things that's really important, you guys, remember this because the first time I started doing this, I totally forgot this step and it ended up me being really frustrated wondering why things weren't working. When you go to export your photos, so I'm just gonna do a, um, an export really quick. Let's go to File, Export. When you go to export your photos, and I don't know where my export window is gonna pull up. Let's see, there it is. When you go to export these, there's an option that you need to make sure is checked in the metadata section. So we're going down here to metadata. So find metadata and make sure that you have this set to include all the metadata. 
If you don't, I think the default is like copyright only or something like that. If this does not say all metadata, all that time that you spent keywording your photos is not going to matter because when you export the photos, they are not gonna have the keywords. Now, all you have to do is go back in Lightroom, redo the export, and make sure that you change this to include the metadata. So, so important that you guys do that so that when you're uploading your photos and you get into Zenfolio and the keywords are in there and it works the way that it does. So just make sure that you check that setting before you export. I think once you set it once, it stays that way unless you change it or create a different export. All right, okay. So now that we have those photos exported, the next step is gonna be uploading these into Zenfolio. Now, one of the things I wanna talk about too is about organizing really quick, okay? So whenever you export or you organize your photos, what I would recommend doing is putting them in a folder that, and let me get back to the folder here, here we go. So I would recommend kind of exporting them in a folder, but having them separated into subfolders like this. So we have Raleigh Baseball, and inside of that, we have a folder that contains the blue team and a folder that contains the orange team. Or if these were classes, maybe having them separated by classes. And the reason that I recommend organizing it in these folders like this is because you want to have all the individual photos in there along with their team photo because the packages on Zenfolio offer a pre-select option where you can force that team photo to go to a specific product in the package, but it only works if you have them separated into their own individual galleries or folders per team because that pre-select option looks for the first photo keyworded with a specific word that you set up, and we can, we'll get into that on another a live stream, but it only works if you have them separated like that. Um, the other thing too is that later on down the road, if you have questions, if a parent's calling you and you need to go in and you need to find somebody's photo, it's gonna be much easier on you if you have these separated and organized in class or team or something folders, so that it's easier for you to search and find the kids' fo photos if you need to. All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to upload that main folder. So you're gonna be uploading this main folder right here, right into Zenfolio. So what we're gonna do is go in here, and the first thing that you wanna have set up is you wanna have a folder for your events. You probably want it to be separate from your standard client folders if you do different types of photography. But basically the, what you wanna do is you wanna have a folder for events, so I've created this one. And then you wanna have some specific settings on here. So what you're gonna do is go up here to access. Now I'm gonna leave it set to public, but one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do is go down to search and say, do not include in search results. If you photograph kids at all and you're doing events, I cannot stress enough how important this setting is right now to pay attention to, especially when you're getting started. Because if you don't turn that search off, then what happens is whenever you upload new content, Google sees that, the search engines see it on your site, they go in and they index it, and then the next thing you know, you have a lot of unhappy parents calling you because their kids' photos are showing up in Google search results. So if you have not done this yet, make sure that you go and you set up a folder that is set to not be included in any search results right here. Now, if you want to set that photo or that folder to private, you can. You'll just have to remember that when you're uploading new content, you'll need to change the access of the new content that you uploaded. So let me go ahead and just hit cancel because I already have that set up. And then what you would do is you would click on that folder and then hit upload. And then you would just drag and drop that folder that you had just had open with the, um, the gallery separated. So right here, you would just grab this folder and drag and drop it. Now it's important to remember that drag and drop functionality is only available in the Google Chrome browser. The next thing that's really important is that your folder organization can only go three folders deep. So one folder for the main, for the main all of it, and then one folder separating each team. And if you needed to have one folder inside of here, you could, but you can only go three folders deep, not like five or six or 10 or 20. It can only be three folders deep. 
if you have more folders, you're gonna see some errors. You're not gonna see some things upload. So you need to make sure that you're only three folders deep when you're uploading this. All right, and then you're just gonna upload these. Now I'm not gonna upload them. I've already got it uploaded into my account. And so let me jump over and show you guys what that looks like. And again, I'm sorry. like. I know you guys have questions in chat. I'm gonna to try to get through this and get to you guys in chat. So make sure that you keep getting your questions in the chat because as soon as I get done, I am gonna jump back and answer as many questions as I can before we run out of time. But I know this is gonna be a long one today. Okay, so we're gonna jump back in here because I've already got these uploaded. So we're just gonna go back to photos and I'm just gonna leave this page and I'm just gonna show you what this looks like whenever you upload that folder. So if we scroll down in here, here is that event or that event folder that I was showing you guys earlier. And then if I expand it, there is that main folder that I uploaded, the, the, the Raleigh Baseball. And inside of it, what it did was it created a gallery for each team, which is exactly what I wanted. So now if I'm on the phone with a parent, if I'm talking to somebody, if I need to go in here and reference anything, I can go right here and quickly find the team gallery and get to it and find their kid's photo pretty quickly because I don't have to go through hundreds and hundreds of photos because I've taken the time to organize it um, appropriately. All right. Um, now, with that being said, you can absolutely have a folder with one gallery and all of the photos for that event in that one gallery. If you want to do that, I would just not recommend it. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to really quick, I'm just going to show you the keywords, how the keywords follow this in here. So if I click on Mr. Alex right here, and if we go up here to details, you're gonna see right over here in the keyword section, there's his keyword, that Z07. That's his jersey, uh, jersey number. If we go down to the team photos, just like I showed you guys, if I click on the team photo, you're gonna see the keywords of all of the players that appear in that photo keyworded into the team photo. Okay, so all of my keywords came in here correctly because I made sure that the metadata was included in the export. And so then what we're gonna do next is actually convert, convert, wow, I almost said a really weird word. I don't know, converge is what I almost said. Convert the folder into a Zenfolio event. And this is what allows us to actually generate random passcodes for everybody. And this is also what's going to allow us to mass or batch email all of our participants directly to their photos. So we're gonna go right over here to that folder we're gonna hit this little drop down menu and we're just gonna hit convert to event. Now, if you're looking in your account and you don't see that, that means that your account level does not support events. You have to be either premium business or advanced to get access to the events feature. Now, once you hit that convert to event, you're gonna see a couple of options. You're gonna see open event. I've already done a live stream on open events. If you're interested in it, go back and look for open events on our YouTube channel. Open events basically let people locate their photos based on keywords. The benefit of a restricted by passcode event is that we are linking the photos to participants via their keyword, but then we are going to assign a passcode that is not their keyword. So basically, let's say that we keyworded by jersey number or by student ID, but we don't wanna let people locate their photos by that because chances are I might know my friend's student ID or it's really easy just to enter a jersey number and find all my friend's photos and maybe the league or the school have some privacy concerns. And so we don't want that to be the passcode that actually gets people to their photos. That's just what links the photos to their data. And so a restricted event actually allows that extra level of protection. So we're gonna choose restricted by passcode, and then we're gonna scroll down here, and we're gonna upload our participant list CSV file. So that is this file that we're looking at right here. And let me just reset my browser. That's this file that we're looking at right here. Now, what I need to do before I upload this is I need to get rid of this right here because I don't need that over here. I need all of this data to be clean. So I'm just gonna delete this now that I'm done with it. And then in Google Sheets, what you would do is go to File, Download as Comma Separated Value Sheet. Your participants list 
has to be a CSV file, not a .excel, not a .numbers. It has to be .csv file, not a .xlsx, I think that's the right term right there, has to be .csv. Um, so again, I like Google Sheets. Microsoft Excel works fine. I would really caution you to stay away from Mac numbers. Not that it's not a good program. It does some weird formatting things that cause some errors from time to time. And usually the fix is don't do it in Mac, Mac numbers, do it in Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Now, really quick, while we're talking about CSV files and participants list, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but below the video, in the resource links section, in the description, there's a link to a video that says CSV file troubleshooting tips. And if I can get uh, Richard to throw that out in the chat for you guys as well, get that link, bookmark it, download it if you can. It's me going over a bunch of troubleshooting tips on CSV files, how to correct them if you have errors or issues with your CSV files. So make sure that you grab that link, it's below the video, or if I can get Richard to throw that out in the chat, that would be awesome as well. But we're gonna download this CSV file, and I actually already have this on my computer, so we're gonna go back into Zenfolio, and we're gonna go ahead and upload this into the event. So we're gonna go, choose file, and then we're gonna just grab that participants list. It is right here under this, and I'm gonna hit open and upload file. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna tell Zenfolio what the unique ID column is. Now, what the unique ID column is, is it is the column on our CSV file that contains the data that we keyworded into the photos. So in my example, it's gonna be this number column right here. So we're gonna go back, and then you'll notice this little dropdown actually shows you the number, you know, the columns of your CSV file. So we're gonna choose number right here. Now, next is we're gonna set up the passcodes, and let me just go full, well, I can scroll down, there we go. So next we're gonna set up the passcodes for each person. So this is the benefit of using a Zenfolio event, because we can link the number, or use the keywords, the numbers, to link these to specific data sets in there, the photos, but we don't want the jersey numbers to be the passcodes, because that's not very secure. And so that's the benefit of this restricted event. Now, I could use the jersey number. I could make up my own passcodes on my CSV file if I wanted to. However, I wanna save some time. I'm gonna let Zenfolio generate those random passcodes for me. So we're gonna click Generate Random Passcodes, and we're gonna hit Save right here. All right, and so once you do that, it's gonna tell you you have 22 participants all this other stuff. What you're interested in next is clicking view list of participants right here. And so I'm gonna click on this and view list of participants. And basically what you're gonna see is you're gonna see your CSV file now in Zenfolio, and you're gonna see all of your data here and you can actually see the randomly generated passcodes, you can see the number of photos. And so this is where you kinda wanna start doing some error checking, right? You wanna make sure that everybody got the correct amount of photos, that everything got linked up correctly. And the nice thing is, and what I always do is when I'm doing this, what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll say, okay, I wanna know if everybody had their photos linked. So you can click on the photos header and it will actually let you sort by that column. And so if I sort here with the smallest number on top, I noticed that Alex right here only has one photo, and I know that everybody should at least have two photos because they all should have at least one individual and one team photo. And so you can do some error checking and correcting it. Now the other thing that you can do as well is you can actually click on these numbers to view those photos. So like, let's see, okay, Alex is obviously missing a photo. Let me click on here to see what photo he's missing. And it's gonna show me the photos that have been linked to Alex. Okay, Alex is missing his team photo. Here's his individual photo, but his team photo is not showing. Whereas if I go back and I click on Pam, I'm seeing that Pam has an individual photo and a team photo. So now I know what I need to correct. Basically somehow, 
Alex's team photo did not get his keyword put into it, or maybe it didn't get uploaded. In this case, his team, his keyword didn't get added to the team photo. So what we're gonna do is we'll just jump back into the CSV file. I'll look at Alex and I'll be like, okay, his keyword is Z07 and he's on team blue. So I'm gonna open photos in a new tab. All right, and we just open it up in a new tab and then what we're gonna do is go in here and this is why having those separated into those galleries is so helpful because now we're gonna click on the Team Blue gallery. We're gonna scroll down. We're gonna find their team photo, click on it, and then we're gonna click on Details. And all we need to do to correct this is add Alex's keyword in here. So I'm gonna click right here and let me zoom in for you guys. We click right there and we're just going to do a comma and then add Alex's keyword, which is Z07. And then I'm just gonna hit the save button right here. Okay, so we've added Alex's keyword in there. We've saved it and that's all I have to do. So now if I go back to the previous tab, which is my participants list, and if I refresh this, now we're gonna see that Alex has two photos. So if we find Alex right here, now Alex has two photos you can see right here. And if I jump back to that preview that we were looking at, where it showed just his individual photo, if I refresh this, now Alex's team photo is showing up like it should because I corrected it and I added in the, um, the keyword for the team photo. Now, one more thing I wanna show you guys, and then we're gonna go into the benefit of a Zenfolio restricted event, why you wanna use that participants list, and if you can get parent emails, how that works. But one more thing I wanna show you guys is that everything is controlled by the keyword on this participants list. That is what controls what photos people get to see. So let's just say, for example, that Pam and Alex are brother and sister. Even though they're on two different teams, they're brother and sister. And so maybe we want to make it a little bit easier for those parents, rather than having two different links to access, we want to make it to where they can see all of their kids' photos from one link. All we need to do is we need to mix their keywords together. And so Pam's keyword is Z01. So what I would do is I would go into the gallery. I would find Alex's individual photo and I would go on here and I would go to details and I would add Pam's keyword, which is Z01 in here, put a comma and save it. And then even though Pam's in another gallery entirely, if I go add Alex's keyword to Pam's photo, so let me find Pam. Where are you at Pam? Are you in here? Right there in front of me, click on Pam and then we're gonna go up here to details and we're gonna add Alex's keyword in here, so comma Z07 and hit save. Even though these two guys or these two players are in separate galleries, the keyword is what brings this all together. So now if I refresh this CSV file again, now we're gonna see that Pam now has three photos. Same thing with Alex, he now has three photos. And if we go here, and we refresh Alex's uh, view again. Now we see the orange photo and the blue. So I just wanted to show you that it's all about the keywords. Even if they're in separate galleries, you can bring them together. All right, so now the last thing I'm gonna show you guys and I'm gonna come back and check on you guys in chat. I know Richard has been doing a phenomenal job of helping you guys with your questions. The next thing I'm gonna do is show you why it's so helpful to do it this way and why a Zenfolio restricted event is, is the best way, in my opinion, to get people to their galleries when you're doing schools and sports and, and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back to this event, to the participants list, and there's a button right up here that says send email. And if you click that, everybody that you have on this list, you can now mass email them an individual email that will have a preview of their kids' images and will also give them a unique link. Now, the other thing is that your columns on your participants list are email substitutions that you can view right over here. So just to show you, we have participants list, uh, player, number, team, email, all of that right here. 
And all of those, except for the passcode, is coming from this. The player, number, team, email, all of that's coming from this list that we imported. And so what you can do with that is you can use it to personalize this email. So I could say hello, and instead of saying you're invited to view Zenfolio Spring Baseball photographs, I could say, copy the player variable right here, and I could say you're invited to view, paste in that player, and then do an apostrophe S, not capitalized, and now it's gonna automatically input each player's name in this email when we send it out. So now if I hit continue to preview, it's going to send everybody on that list a unique email. It's gonna say right up here, hello, you're invited to view Pam's photos. Hello, you're invited to view Alex's photos. And it's gonna give them the direct link to go look at just their kids' photos right here, as well as provide them with that unique generated passcode. So they get the email, they click on this, and it takes them right to view their kids' photos. All right, and that is the benefit to having that Zenfolio event set up that way with the parent emails. Now you guys might see this option right behind my head that says send me a copy of this message. Whatever you do, do not select that option. It will send you a copy of every single email that is sent out. So if you have a thousand people on your participants list, you're gonna get a thousand emails that day and that's probably not what you want. So don't click that button. It's going to basically spam you and send you a copy of every single email that's getting sent out. Not really spam, but it's it's doing what you tell it to. All right. All right, guys. Sorry I was so long-winded today. I had a lot to get through. I tried to get through it as fast as I can. Let me jump back and check on you guys on chat really quick. Like I said, I know Richard's been taking good care of you guys. Really quick, too, if you're watching the recorded version of this, we would love to have you jump on a live stream and hang out with us, but I know not everybody can stop what they're doing Thursday and just jump on YouTube, which is why Home Phone, Amy, Amy, I'm going to try, can I say it? Maris? How do I say it? Tell me how to say it, Amy, so I don't feel like a dork when I try to say your last name. But Amy, Kathleen, um, let's see who else is hanging out with me today. Something Blue, uh, Charles, Rebecca, Mark, Roxanne, all of you guys, Winston, Tom England, all of you guys who are hanging out with me today, I appreciate you guys so much. But all of you guys who will watch the recorded version of this, I appreciate you guys as well. And if you have a question that you would like for me to answer the following week, there's a link in the description below this video that says questions for next week. You can click on that and send a question in and I will answer it on the following live stream. Now, let me check on you guys in chat. Let's see, Kathleen says, when I search for winter on my site, the search page is a different color than the main site. Is there a way to make it matchy matchy? Once I search those images, am I able to make a new gallery with them? All right. Uh, Amy says it rhymes with Rolls Royce. Maroyce? Maroyce? Maroyce. Maroyce? Mar or more? I, I don't know. I'm tongue tied today. Sorry, Amy. All right. Kathleen says that when she searches on her site, the page is a different color. Is there a way to make it match? Absolutely. So what you want to do, Kathleen, is in your site, go right here to website. And I'm going to open up built-in pages in a new tab really quick. And then we're just going to jump over into that new tab. We're going to scroll down. We're going to find that search page, which is right here. And then click the customize option. And then basically what you need to do is you need to set the search page theme to match your home pages theme. So you're going to go right up here to themes and then it should be the same as home page. So click on this and say, you know, same as home page and save it. Um, if it's not that, you'll just need to click on it and save it. So like if I go down here, for instance, and I click this other theme, the search page is now going to be a totally different color than the rest of my site. And again, that's just the theme designer thing. Woo, that is an ugly theme. Um, it's just a theme designer thing. So you just need to go back up to themes and then you're just gonna say, okay, I want you to use the same theme as my homepage and hit apply just like that. And then you'll need to make sure that you publish that by clicking the little publish button right up here to make those changes live. Now, the next part to your question, Kathleen says, once I do a search, is there a way to, um, to make a new gallery with those images? 
So I'm not exactly sure what you want, but let me take a stab and see if I get close. Let's say I do a search for portraits. So let's do portraits. All right. And I do a search. Maybe I do a search. I don't know. My internet's starting to be slow. Hopefully it's not a uh, hurricane, uh, the hurricane coming in. So, and probably a lot of my stuff basically is not going to have um, search results because I set it up that way. But let me publish this and let me show you what to do. What you can do is you can link to search results. And so what I mean is, let me just show you really quick. Right up here in the top, this URL is basically just the URL with the query that I typed, is that the right word? With the search term that I put in here added to the end right here. And so what you can do is you can actually copy this URL um, maybe I can. Command A, Command C. You can actually copy that URL. And let's say you want to make an easy access to this. Um, what you're going to do is just edit your site menu to link to that search query. So if you go to Edit Page, I think this might be what you're wanting to do, not 100% sure. You're going to go to Edit Page, and then you're going to say Add New, and you could say um, Portraits, and hit Enter. And then you're going to use the external web page option, even though this is not an external web page, we just need to be able to paste that URL in here, and then we're going to paste it. And so it's going to include that search term, and then I hit update. And so now, basically I've created a site menu item that links to a predefined search. So if I publish this, and again, no search results are showing because my site's probably set up to not be searchable for this demo. But now if I click on portraits, it's just gonna take me to that search result right here. And if I drop this down, you can see right up here, it has that in there. So that's kind of a way that if you wanna link to those search results, you can. Now, we did a live stream. It's probably been a couple of months back. It's called how to customize the visual appearance of your built-in search page. Definitely a live stream you want to go back and watch if you're going to be doing that. This way you can get that live, or that, not that live stream, you can get that search page looking exactly the way that you want it to look. So make sure that you do that and you have that search page. But hopefully, Kathleen, that got close to answering what you want. Uh, not sure, but hopefully I got pretty close to that. Let me know in the chat if I totally fouled that up or not. All right. Let me get back to my Zenfolio account real quick. And um, let's see, let me go and grab an email question really quick. Uh, let's see. I really don't want my clients cropping their images. How can I ensure that they do not have the ability? Is that a gallery setting? So basically, what you need to do is um, you need to go in and adjust your price list settings. It's basically a price list setting. Now, it also depends on if you're offering, um, if you're offering, let's say, self-fulfilled products or vendor-fulfilled products. I'm assuming you're offering vendor-fulfilled products. This is gonna be a setting on your price list. So you're gonna go to selling, go to price list, and you're gonna need to do this for each category in your price list, as well as if you offer packages. So we're just gonna to go to, uh, what do I have here to use? This one has seven products, so let's see what it has on there. Um, okay, so we're gonna to go to the HV Baseball, and what we're gonna do is just go to the print category, and if you go right up here, cropping is an option right here. So right now it's set to allow clients to crop the photos. If you don't want your clients to crop the photos, what you can do is either set it to centered or fit. Now, I would definitely, definitely recommend that if you change these settings, um, that you have it to where you can review the cropping and all that stuff. One thing to keep in mind is that if your clients don't crop the photos, Zenfolio's default cropping is set to be centered anyway. So if your clients don't crop the image, the um, the print is going to be centered or the image is gonna be centered on the printed product, basically is how it's gonna work. One thing that I recommend is considering creating a price list based on your camera's native aspect ratio. That way, when you upload photos, as long as you're not cropping them in weird aspect ratios and you maintain your original aspect ratio, if you build your price list based on that aspect ratio, 
I always set my cropping to fit because I know that my images all fit perfectly on the print sizes that I offer. And there's a really good video tutorial on there. Um, that There's a really good video tutorial on the YouTube channel that will walk you through that whole process and show you what that looks like. It's called Building a Better Price List Based on Your Camera's Aspect Ratio. Definitely one that you wanna check out if cropping is an issue. But if you don't want your clients to crop, like I said, you can just turn that option off here. And you'll need to make sure that you do that for each product category that you have. And then if you're offering packages, you'll need to go in and do that in the packages as well. So you would just, after you do it here, you would save that. And then you would go back to selling, click on packages right here. And then you're gonna go into a package, whatever package you have set up go to products, and then make sure that you have that set to um, not allow cropping. So right here, if you expand it, it's right here under the options cropping. Go here and turn it to off or to center it or to fit or whatever you want it to be. Keep in mind, fit is going to force fit the image on the printed product, which could result in some borders around if it's not large enough or if the aspect ratio is weird. Centered is going to take the image and basically center it on the, the print. So some of your photo might be cropped off, but there won't be any white borders around the photo. Fit will cause the white borders, so it can, can do something like this. All right, hopefully that answers your question though. Um, again, definitely something that I would consider one of the things that has been a big time saver for me is not having to worry about cropping by building my price list based on my camera's aspect ratio. And then anytime I crop and post, I maintain my original aspect ratio so that I'm offering all print product sizes that are in 3-2 aspect ratio. All of my photos, even if I crop them, are still in 3-2 aspect ratio. And then everything fits exactly like I want it to and cropping is never an issue. The downside to that is that it does take a little bit of client re-education because eight by tens and five by sevens and four by sixes, not only are they all three different sizes, they're all three different aspect ratios. And those are the print sizes that most clients are familiar with. Um, however, um, whenever you change to using that 3-2 aspect ratio, then you're offering things like 8x12s instead of 8x10s, and you just kind of have to explain that to your client. Uh, I promise you, the biggest question that people have about that is, oh, can I find an 8x12 frame? Like, I don't know if I can find one. I promise you, Walmart has them. I'm not saying get your products framed at Walmart. Walmart has 8x12 frames. Michaels has 8x12 frames. Zenfolio, through most of our integrated vendors, offer 8x12 frames and frames for basically most of the print sizes that you can offer your clients as well. So framing is never an issue. Um, and let's see, let's really quick. Bill said he has the advanced plan, but he does not see the event feature. So Bill, there's a couple of places where you can go to get access to that. Um, first thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to convert a folder to an event. So if you have not created a group yet, Bill, go up here, go create a new group. And then after you have that new group created, hover over that new group, click this and see if you get convert to event here. Now, if your account looks a little bit different than mine, if your account is orange, that should still be the same. It should still be right here by converting it to an event just like that. Hopefully, Bill, that kind of helps answer that question. Guys, we've got about three more minutes. So again, today is International Day of Charity. You guys know what's going on, what's what happened in the Bahamas, what's going on all up and down the East Coast. Well, not up and down, but what's coming up the East Coast. And so there are two links in the description below this video of charities that I'm personally gonna be donating to today. One is for the Red Cross, for victims and people affected by Hurricane, uh, is it Dorian, is that the right? I wanna keep wanting to say Dorian. Hurricane Dorian or Darian. I know I sound like a total dork because I don't know what the name is. But anyway, basically people affected by the hurricane, there's a link to that in the video description below. And then again, Anthony 
Carbajal, I hope I said his name right. Sorry, Anthony, if I didn't. You guys, he's a Zenfolio user. You guys might be familiar with him through the Ice Bucket Challenge uh, for ALS. There is a link to learn more about him. He also has a print of the month on there that's really cool. And then a place where you can go and set up and donate to him as well. Definitely, um, <laughs> Richard says Dorian. Thanks, Richard, for, for backing me up. Um, but those links are down below. But hey, guys, I know like we can't always give to charity, so just take some time today to do something nice for somebody, do something good. You don't have to give money to give to charity. You can go volunteer. You can just be a good neighbor. You can reach out, make sure that people are ready for the hurricane, that they're prepared for what's coming. Maybe they need some help. Maybe your neighbor needs some help just moving stuff into the garage, or maybe you have a carport they can park their car under, right? We don't have to donate money to be a charitable, to be charitable. I try to say things like this at the end of every Zenfolio Live, but I just wanna encourage you guys, that especially now in the time that we're in now, to make sure that you use what you've been given to do something good, to help people, to be a positive influence, to change things for the better. Make sure that you are prepared for what's coming if you're on the East Coast. Make sure you're reaching out to family and friends and make sure that you are just, you know, doing something to bring more positivity into this world and we can all work together together to make it a better place. I really appreciate all of you guys so much who come on here week after week and hang out with me during the live stream. Uh, Kathleen, Bill, thanks Richard for doing such an awesome job taking care of everybody in the chat. Amy, Mor Mor Amy, dang it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Amy uh, Mor Morois, why am I so tongue-tied today? Amy, Amy, uh, Kathleen, Home Phone, Craigslist, uh, something blue, Charles, all of you guys who come and hang with me today, I really appreciate it. Make sure that you guys check out Site Review Tuesday, next Tuesday, same time. And then don't forget, next week on Zenfolio Live, I'm going to show you how to use the event feature even if you can't get parent emails. We're going to be going into Photoshop and creating a take-home sheet so that you can give people um access to their photos. You can give each kid their own password and their own gallery link and all of that. So make sure that you tune in next week for that. Please stay safe if you're in the path of the hurricane. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend. I will see you guys all again next week. Hey, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you click that subscribe button. And if you're watching the recorded version of this and you'd like to learn more about Zenfolio, I recommend watching some of the videos that you should see popping up on your screen.